Good afternoon and welcome to another edition of the Corporate Women in Leadership. These conversations have been going on since before lockdown and now during lockdown we've taken a different direction, a different dimension. We've had the opportunity of connecting with women all over the world from different angles, different backgrounds, different corporate experience, different career experience, different community experience, different life experiences. So right now we're trying to bring all these women together so that they can sit on this table and talk about their experience, their expertise, what they've done, how they've done it, so that they can also share, you know, some of the qualities, some of the skill sets that you need to do the things that you that you have to do. So, excuse me, that's my daughter. <laughs> it rarely happens, but then we know we're all working from home, so from time to time they bump in, isn't it? So our topic for today is quite exciting, but before coming on to our topic, I'm going to put some of the videos of our past events so you can see and you can be a part of this conversation as we drive on. So here we go. Now we are back and what you've been watching just now you've watched um 2016 we hosted a corporate women in leadership open summit in cameroon and i think you had a 2018 version which was done in cote d'ivoire we also have the dakar version which was done in 2019 and we have the um the gabon version which was done in 2019 17 so this is something that we've been doing you know in the last um the last five years and we're quite happy with the way you know with the way things have taken up we're quite happy with the ladies who've come on board the ladies who've been a part of this journey and so far uh, in the last three years we've been running the mentor mentee program which has been quite successful and lately we've seen an increase in the number of people requesting and asking to to be on our mentorship scheme so this is all done for free because what we try to do is we try to place and we try to leave you up with women who have got it all women who have who can share you know what they have women who can help you to get to the level that you want to go so the topic for today legacy versus career which one are you which one are you building which one are you doing at the moment are you in a career or are you building a legacy so the topic we actually focus on educating you on the differences between building a career legacy you know starting with the most important and how to go about building to maintain a long-lasting relationship sometimes we think we just go to work and we work but the impacts that we have on those that we come that we come across every day 
what are the impacts, what are the implications. So today I have two very, very exciting speakers. For those of you who do not know me, that's my name, Adeline Sede Kamgam, the founder, the CEO of Faberfreak Media Group. But I love to call myself, you know, an editor or the publisher of Faberfreak Magazine. I'm sure most of you have seen Faberfreak Magazine or know of Faberfreak Magazine. If not, then please do ask me more about Faberfreak Magazine and I'll be able to share you information post this. Legacy, career, in your own words. We need to speak to these two women. The reason why these two women are ideal candidates to speak on this platform today is because there is a pattern that I've seen in the last 10 years. You know, there's a pattern that I've seen. And this pattern is not a one hit pattern. It's a pattern that has been growing, you know, slowly, surely, surely, slowly. Let me start with our first guest today. Um, that attorney Bawa, founder CEO of Edinin House Chili Oil, co-founder Bawa Books, business data test manager in Power Northampton, UK. She's going to be our, you know, one of our speakers. And then we have my dear Mireille Tushiminana, who is going to be checking in all the way from Boston. She is the managing director of African Development Solution Labs Experts, you know, ADSLE. And one thing I want to say about these two women is that although they might be coming from two different extremes, there is a meeting point and there's a way forward. Where is that meeting point and where is that way forward? You'll be able to look into that very shortly. But before I bring them on screen, I would like to just put a little bit of bio banner. For those of you who've not had the time to be on our platform, you can read all about Mireille. Mireille, a national of the Democratic Republic of the Congo, DRC, manages the African Development Solution Labs Expert, where she has focused extensively on monitoring and reporting on various gross human rights violations by armed force groups, the ongoing Anglophone crisis in Cameroon, and socioeconomic dimension of conflict in Africa, fragile states. Prior to that, and for over 20 years, she has held senior management level position in international development, human rights, conflict prevention and resolution, peace building, political reforms, women's peace and security, gender and democratization. She has demonstrated expert in negotiation, mediation, prevention of violence, extremism program, monitoring and evaluation of national, regional and international levels. I can tell you this, I can tell you this for free because I've happened to work with Mireille on some very, very high profile project, which will be, you know, we'll be talking about this project as time goes on. We'll be, I'll be tapping into all those. She, sometimes she likes to, 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 to tamper low her, some of her major achievement. I think this is an opportunity to put her out there in the open and say, Mireille, tell us about how you did this. And we'll be listening from, you know, for that. So let me see. I would love to call her Inda. I mean, throughout our conversation, I'm going to be calling her Inda because that's the name I know her. That's the name I know her. That's the name I've known her all my life. You know, ever since I, I met Inda, she's been, um, the first thing I noticed about her is how articulate she, she is and how intentional she puts her points across. She doesn't mix her words and she takes things straight to where they have to be. So she is a seasoned freelance IT consultant for close to 20 years. She has held various roles in multinational, multi-million IT transformation programs, accumulating in her current role as business data test manager with NPower. For those of you who know NPower, they supply most of the energy supply, electricity and more here in the UK. And it's a leading UK supply of gas and electricity. Her two decade long career has seen her work in a variety of industries from banking, retail, and commercial, hospitality, energy, accounting, enterprise, performance management. Um, Inda is the founder and CEO of Intindi. In Tinder House Chili Oil, which she has set up in honor of her dad's legacy. Talking about legacy, look at where this is coming into. Added to this, she's the co founder of Bawa Books, a passion led literacy brand set up for their daughters work as authors and book reviewer for those of you who do not know about that please stay with us you're going to be listening from her and she's going to be telling us how she's building a legacy what she's done what she's done so far and how she's doing it but right now there are some burning questions that i want to 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 to, to ask them but before this burning question i'm just going to ask you to share this link so that other people can join the conversation and while waiting for our audience to build up i'm just going to um, I think I did introduce Mireille and for Inda, 
that is in that she's Tatani Mbawa and that's the name of her company into the house chili oil eat tendi i think she's going to pronounce it better you know sometimes we kind of pronounce the things the way we want to but she will have the perfect pronunciation for that once she starts speaking and we want to say thank you to all those who are joining us hi mbaka hello hello ramses hello feza our uh, first is checking in from Ethiopia, Ramses from Kumba, and we're so happy you're joining us. Please do make sure you share the link. Now, let me pop these ladies on the screen. I guess I've been speaking a lot, isn't it? So, I'll pop them one after the other. Hi, Mirei. Hi. Hi. And I'll pop them in, in that as well. Hello. I'm so excited. You know, I'm so excited to be hosting you ladies today. And we're going to be talking about career versus legacy building a career versus building a legacy. I mean, I'm sure they all intertwine, but we want to see at what level they meet and the extra things that we do, that we put for this to be not just a career, but a legacy. So I'm going to let you introduce yourself. I'll start with you, Inda, who you're right there at the bottom. So tell us who you are. Um, um, you've done a rather good job of it, Adeline. Um, first of all, thank you for having me here. It's a humbling experience to um, be here on the Corporate Women in Leadership page, um, talking about something which has been very close to my heart and our hearts for the last couple of years, or um, even more, I think, if we think about the career part of this topic. Um, I'm Inda Tatani Mbawa, as, as you've rightly said. Um, a mom of three, a wife. We live in Northampton, UK. Been an IT professional for close to 20 years now. Um, but those days, I think, um, are, are waning a bit because there's more. There's more to life. There's more to give. So um, a couple of years ago, we started to think about what next, what to do. Um, what does continuity look like? Um, what does the next step look like? So we, we thought we'd um, set up something in my dad's legacy, a tinder house chili oil. Um, it started out very small, but I think it's gaining ground, it's gaining traction. So we um, produce a range of chili oils through um, this artisan firm, and it's making inroads into the UK retail scene. And what we also um, have is, I wouldn't call it a publishing house, we call it a literacy brand because it's not just about books, it's about other things which foster different types of literacy. Um, so it's literacy brand which we've set up for our daughters because they read and they write a lot, um, um, which has culminated in them um, publishing their debut novels with our help. So, so we do that and, and between that having three kids and a full-time job and running the chili oil business, um, life is full. Um, but we're fulfilled with that as well. So that's me. Um, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much, Inda. And I think you, you did a better job than I did because sometimes we say introducing yourself is quite hard. <laughs> but I think you've mastered. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you've mastered also. Hi, Mira again. I call her my sister from the Congos because she gives me a lot of gas. <laughs> so tell us about yourself. <laughs> I am honored, you know, to, to share the space with amazing women like you and, and especially you that I've known for years. And uh, thank you for creating this space, you know, and 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 this has been a, a, a journey, you know, over a decade journey for both of us. And and I strongly believe to move our issues uh, forward. We, we need uh, to bring that uh, diversity, diverse background, skill set and experiences, you know, and, and, and leverage from our differences as well. And, you know, ideas and empathy uh, for women, which you are creating right now in particular African women, women in the diaspora, uh, women of African descent, you know, to stimulate understanding of the existing multitude of problems we are trying to solve. I myself, uh, a, a legacy product, I call myself a legacy product because my mother started the journey and when she passed on the baton, actually, I, I, I took it by force. I took that baton for, uh, by force uh, because at that time, I thought that I was uh, equipped to kind of carry on what she started in, in, in the DRC. And uh, today I, I am proud to say that uh, that journey led me 
to be able to speak and share some of my experiences to uh, to the world and to 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 my 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 peers uh, about my journey as a uh, uh, women's rights uh, defender, my journey as a uh, women peace and security expert, my journey as a mediator, and my journey of you know drafting some of the policies out there. Uh, and and you know just and and you know Adeline that I don't really uh, talk about uh, uh, some of my achievements, but looking back, you know, coming from the background that I had, and and today, you know, being at the places where I, I, I am today, and and and, I, and I'm sorry if I'm not giving so many uh, details on that. Maybe I will I will uh, expand on that later on. But I can only thank God. I can thank God because my mom, my mother is here. Uh, she has seen uh, uh, the, the work that she started and, and all the, the 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 values that she has instilled in me. And and, and here I am, you know, working in a space I know that I was born to do, and I'm comfortable and and I'm passionate about. So this is a little bit about me. Thank you. Thank you so much. I like the, the working in a space that I'm comfortable about. It reminds me of a question I had um, two days ago from a friend who said happiness at work. You know, it's all about how com confident and comfortable you are. So we, we're going to be talking about legacies and career today. So, but but we, we I know there's a clear difference, you know. So I'll take on you, Inda. What, how, in your own words, you know, what are they? What's a career and what's a legacy? Well, um, um, you may think that they're two different things, but uh, one can fit into the other. <clears throat> I think we need to be clear on how we sometimes can separate um, legacy from career, because in traditional terms, we think of a career as something that's very academic. Um, it's, um, you know, a set of accomplishments that can be assessed, can be applauded and recognized, um, or a professional journey that's long term. <clears throat> that maybe stems from someone's passion. Like Mirel's case, this is what I'm sensing. Um, a career, a legacy, on the other hand, is your mark on the world. Um, so you can you can leave your mark on the world through your work, which can be your career, can't you? Uh, you can also um, use your gift to leave your mark. But what you we have to be careful about is, I think, for me, a legacy really is being mindful of the opportunity and the responsibility that we have to impact, to leave lasting change or last, lasting impact on the people that we come across in the journey of our life's work, whether that be um, uh, something that we've come on to through academia or something that is business related, for instance. Um, so we have to be mindful of that. So it's our impact, it's our life's work, uh, it's our gift and our gift to the world, I think. Thank you. I think I think um, that that explained in your own words, and I feel I feel I, I connect with you. I relate with you. Let's see what Mira think about this. Well, yes, thank you. Actually, along the, the the same line, though, and and I believe as I mentioned earlier that you know you have created that platform of bringing you know different skill set together and experiences, and that's how, in my own word, I kind of define a uh, career. Uh, a career for me personally, I see it as, you know, as a, a, a box, you know, a box that contain, you know, achievements, you know, my, my, my track record, how I measure my, my success in, in, a, in a professional setting, you know, uh, goal, checklist and all of that, how I assess my skills overall and, 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 and how I'm able now also to change my work environment, either positively or negatively, that's, you know, your, your personal decision. However, when it comes to legacy, it's when you reach a turning point uh, in your life, you know, when you decide and, you know, to leave a, 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 a humane purpose, you know, and, and which often leads to taking a risk, a lot of risk, uh, a, a lot of sacrifices, and, and, and you, you choose that part, that particular part, uh, uh, to build a, a, a power and, and to build the power of your voice to drive social change in the lives of, of uh, the people that you intend to serve, in my case, in the lives of women and girls that I see. So uh, both, it's either way, but uh, 
for you to build your legacy, there are some exceptions because your career path often, that's where you find your true calling. And that calling, that's how you build your legacy moving forward. So it's depend on the people as well. So Mireille, would you say there is a difference between the two of these? Would you would you point the difference? <laughs> like I said, there are some exceptions. <laughs> Didn't I say that? So let me ask you this because um, I, I am known for asking questions instead of responding them right away. So do you uh, do you need a career to make a lasting impact in people's life? You know, because when you think of inspirational leaders like the Mother Teresa's, you know, when you think of Miriam Makeba, who used her, her music to change, you know, to really change and shape our continent and the diaspora, you know, do you really need a career? That's when, uh, and, and I personally have met incredible uh, women and, and, and few men who really helped, you know, shape my journey, but they had no career at all no ambition. It's just because they were just there. And for me, sometimes I feel like through all your journey, you just need to meet that person that is giving you uh, uh, that, that, that validates your worth and, and, and your work and, and, and push you to do further. So for me, the, the difference sometimes will, when you get closer, people building the legacy, it's when you really decide to get closer to the problem and you have the burning desire to solve it, you know, and, and regardless of the situation that you're in and the position, your social status in life, and you decided to, to, to be through to it and, 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 and work that road. And sometimes that road is, is quite uh, lonely and often you are uh, misunderstood, you know, and, and because you, you decided to trade in your comfort uh, to serve, you know, to serve. So as I said earlier, there is always exceptions because um, there are some people, they found their calling through their careers. And once they, they were able to uh, to really define their worth on, on, on this planet of ours and decided to build their journey. So I'm a woman activist, of course, and, and I'm comfortable and, and this is what I chose. So I will say personally, there's a slight difference. It's all about the approach and where you found your calling. And most often you find it while you're in your career. So Inda, would you, would, you, would, you, would you relate to what Mireille just said? And if there is something you want to add about the differences between the career and the legacy, what will it be? I think, um, I think um, what I relate to is um, what Mireille said about people leaving a legacy when they have no career to speak of. Because um, a legacy isn't, well, you don't necessarily have to be consciously doing something professional to leave a legacy. You can leave a legacy in your home. You can leave a legacy of kindness. You can leave a legacy of peace. You can leave any sort. I mean, our mothers back in the village could leave any amount of legacies, right? Of a legacy of being organized, of being on time, right? And that is a legacy. That's one that I struggle with, but that's a legacy, never mind. So <laughs> so, I, so I think it comes in, in various shades. So I, I quite like that. Um, but, but what I think is one of the key things is that we are living a legacy whether we know it or not. And I think the key difference begins to come in when we stop looking for recognition and start to think about significance. How are we going to remain significant long after we're here? Or how is our work going to remain significant after we're here? Because careers end, um, legacies live on. So, yeah, the key is not to um, leave forever, it's to create or do something that will leave forever. Um, so if we think about it that way, those are the key differences. Career kinds of feels time boxed. You, you might leave a legacy when you work in a company, but you retire and you move off and, uh, and somebody takes that on. But the legacy keeps going. It keeps going. And it, it, the career speaks of success. You know, you had a successful career. But with your legacy, it's about service. Who do you serve um, or, or which set of people do you serve? So, um, and, and a career is about what you do, mainly what you do. You, and, and more and more, I think people in leadership are be becoming more, um, more legacy minded. Uh, they're, they're having, having more of a legacy mindset. 
Um, they have a, a, a legacy agenda, I would say, um, but a career is about what you do, whereas a legacy is who you are, because there's a set of values, isn't there, that go with leaving a legacy. There's a set of non-negotiables that come with leaving a legacy. When you really find out and you appreciate who you are and you start living life on your own terms, um, that begins to forge a path for your legacy and you begin to focus on the priorities that will deliver the visions and the values that are true to who you are. So in there, I think being conscious, because if you're not conscious about leaving a legacy you're probably leaving a negative one i think <laughs> you, if you're not careful you could yeah so um so yeah so those are the sort of things it's time boxed a career legacy lives on um it's about who you are and um for a legacy and what you do for a career so i think those there are the key things that we need to think about when we look at how different a career is to a legacy but whatever it is we have to i think take on board the fact that in our careers lies a big chance to leave a legacy. We really can't separate the two. Wow. I think one thing I, I picked, which I which I feel is quite important, and I picked this from both yourself and from Mireille, is the unconsciousness, you know, um, and the intention on why you're doing something. And a lot of great points, but, but, but I feel, um, I feel we need to find out a little bit more because sometimes we might make this point and those listening, you know, listening to us might find a little bit difficult to relate. Mm -hmm. I can relate quite easily because I, well, maybe because I'm the one more directing. So <laughs> the one I want to find out from you girls, um, what should people focus on? Because I am sure living a legacy, I'm building a career. They have two different roles to play in our lives. You know, one could be either I want to build a career so that I become the head of or the director of this because I want to make more money or I want to build a career because my father is expecting this from me. So which one do you think people should focus on at every given time? Should they focus on building a career or should they focus on living a legacy? So I'll pick you, Mireille. Oh. <laughs> thank, you. Uh, thank you for the question, actually. Uh, while you were talking, I was just, you know, going to my head. I was like, wow. Um, it's quite interesting, you know, uh, choosing careers versus a legacy. That makes me think of how uh, unique identification of our DNA uh, typing uh, differentiates, you know, uh, us from one another. And it's the same theory that I will apply, you know, if we have different uh, DNA sequencing, meaning we, we can now all be and legacy driven, you know, and not all of us be career driven. But either way, it's realizing that making an impact is as vital than making an income, you know. And when you focus on really what you want to do in life, it's okay, you know, it's okay. You don't have to do both. You don't have to. If God gives you the power, like there are some exceptions to the rules go for it and do it. And my advice in particular, as you know, that I, most of my life I, I worked, uh, I, I work with women and girls and for the forward thinking, my advice to the forward thinking women, women leaders, women in a corporate world, regardless of your, your, your sector of choice, I mean, you should definitely dare to think outside the box. And if you have the skill set you equip and you have the power to merge the two, go for it. Have a career and legacy driven mindset because it will put you in a position where first you can monetize your business, you know, you can create, you know, uh, opportunities. And some of those opportunities are actually uh, uh, lasting opportunities because you, you are creating jobs for new gen uh, new generation new generation of of women like you spoke about mentorship you know mentorship that you are also doing for free uh, 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 within uh, the, the the corporate uh, uh, women's uh, environment so for me it's just it's about uh, yourself reflecting on what is truly important to me what is important do you once you realize your importance and that you're important in the world, in this world that you are living, leave it. 
If it's money, go ahead. If it's social status, fine, recognition. Or if it's changing one person's life at a time, just leave it, love it, do it. But when you are doing it, do it well, that people will remember your name. It's about the name, it's about the legacy, it's about getting people yeah, to talk about exactly. you years after you've after you've left. So um in that what what should I mean Mireille, thank you. I think your points are very I mean I totally agree with you, you know, totally, totally, you know, and looking at all the things that you've you've achieved coming to this this side, I think you you're living a lasting legacy that we we'll, we'll can never take it away, never <laughs> ever. You know, I will go anywhere, and I will say in 2016 or in 2000 days when Mireille gave me a phone call, I said Adeline, I'm creating this coalition, and I want you to be on board. You know, so that's a legacy. I'll always talk about that because this is never going to be erased from my resume. It's always going to be there. So, Inda, what should people focus on at this point? What would you say people should focus on? Um, I like Mirelle's point when she said about um, do it, do it from your heart, do it so people will remember you long after you've you've gone. And I think closing with that. Um, it still comes back to the point that whatever we do, we're leaving a legacy. All we need to do is to be intentional about it. I think it's it's service over success, isn't it? So if we if we focus on service, um, anything that we do from then on, we will leave a legacy through that. I think. Um, so whether it's in your in your job, focus on being of, of service, and and in that way you will add value. And in adding value, your career will grow, and so will your legacy. So I, 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 I really thought about this, and I found it hard um, to to really separate the two. Because why would anybody um, get off their bed to go to something that their heart wasn't in? We do it. Sometimes it happens. Don't get me wrong. Um, but when your heart is in it, and when you're doing it from a service standpoint, um, from a point of view of adding value, um, then you know it's hard to see what you're focusing on because then you're leaving a legacy, but at the same time, you're building your career. So I, it, to me, cut and dried, a career is too, um, too me, me, me focused, too individualistic, I think. I would want to focus on adding value, building a legacy. And in that way, um, your career will blossom. It, it, it must, it should, um, really, because it's about giving. I think um, give us get more ultimately. So it's it's one thing that we have to keep in mind. And it's little steps. It's about every day, the actions, the decisions, even the failures and how we recover from it. Um, those things um, leave an impact. Those things leave a legacy. So it's, it's those little things because the legacy itself is the torch. But the why and the purpose of, of what it is that we're looking to achieve, that's the core. And any priority that we have, has to be um, at the forefront of delivering that vision. So let us focus on um, passing on that torch. A company has to survive. What is the purpose of Apple to make top of the range phones? That is the torch. That is the torch. Yeah, and, and, yeah. and, we, have and to, we have to think that we have the priorities that will make sure that the why is delivered through that torch. So I, I really struggle, Adeline, to separate the two. But if we are staying. Um, having it top of mind, if we're raising our kids to think your work must count long after you're here, um, it will be legacy for me. Because I think, because, it, I think it, because I've come from, I've come from that way, um, you, you know a bit about our story. Our dad, uh, you know, left a farm in the family and that's what we're known for. And that's his name. He made it through that day in, day out, 40 years, he went there. And, and, and it stuck with me. He might be buried somewhere in there, but ultimately something brings it up. And that's how, even if you don't do that same thing, you will pass something on to your children like we're doing now with the books and the chili oil to say you've got something in you that you need to um, utilize and pass on. Because remember that our career is not always our passion. That's the thing. And, 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 and you find that halfway down the line, and if you're not courageous enough to take that step to do what's right for you, well, you return somebody else's terms, don't you? I think you you you've kind of you've kind of really balanced up, you know, Mireille's points and your points have been, you know, 
your point of smoothing the whole, you know, question on why people should focus more on building a legacy rather than building a career. Mm -hmm. Because you can be you can be in a career and you still build a legacy. This is all linked to your, you know, your action and how yeah, what you yeah. want people to think of you. Now, this will take us right on to the next question, which is the how. Because sometimes mm -hmm. we say we should, we should, we should. But um, for the benefit of those who do not know what or how, mm -hmm. I would like us to, you know, we, we just didn't spring up from nowhere and become, you know, all these people with intelligence and expertise and mm -hmm. there should there, there is a way there is something that we've done in the last 20 years i mean between three of us we've, we've used like 20 years of our life working we've gained some skills and these skills must have been transferred to you know to those around us to either our colleagues or our kids in your cases or our friends so how do we transfer the skills that we've had and what i mean if we can name some of the skills you know, not necessarily, but if we can name some of the skills that we have acquired throughout our career or mm -hmm. our growth, I'll call it our growth, which of these skills have we been able to use to, you know, to impact our family, our community? What are some of the skills that we can, how do we transfer these skills from, okay, I've I'm working with this company. I've learned how to show empathy because this is what is required. I've shown how, you know, I've learned how not to harass because I'm going to be, you know, I've learned how not, I've learned how to be organized because, so these skills that we've learned at work over the last 20 years, how have we been able or how can we transfer these skills in our current situation to help others gain not just knowledge, but understand that, you know, in life, you don't, you don't just have to go work, but you have to think about others. Because I, I think legacy is more on empathy, isn't it? I mean, when I say empathy, I mean, it, it's kind of connected because you, you look at someone and you feel there is something that they need to know. There is something that they need to do. And you have this already. You can pass it on for them to pick it up and take it to the different level. I mean, I might interpret it my own way, but in your own words, you know, how do we transfer these skills? So Mireille, let me start with you. <laughs> okay, thank you for this question, Adeline. Um, as you stated, you know, we all have um, 20 years a journey. And as you know that every woman has uh, a unique story to tell, you know, and some stories are harder than, than others, but throughout our path and our journey, it's a learning experience. And I, for example, I work in conflict affected areas and I've done it for years and I've learned it the hard way. I can tell you, I've learned it the hard way. And, uh, and by how I learn it is, you know, uh, that some of the skill sets at that time I never, I didn't know, I never realized that uh, today that the main or most of my skill set, I've, I've gained them and I've amassed them through failures. And, and in, if you ask me, I have a doctorate in failures because that's where most of the bulk of my skill sets, uh, I've, I've learned it the hard way. And, um, and this was quite important. And how I transfer that into uh, all my learning experience, my passion, because one of, uh, uh, I don't quite know if passion is a skill because you just have people that were born with that. And now how do I transfer that? And, and I see that through my children and some of the, the women and girls that I mentor as well. Uh, first, when it comes to passion and, and the love for the work that I do, uh, looking at the world, the complexity of the world in a different lens. For example, uh, I have two children, do not call them because I, I and do not ask them because they will complain how uh, it's a boot camp and I, and, and I run a, a tight ship. I've shared my journey with them and my advice to them has been to constantly remind them to live a life of purpose. And how do you live that life of purpose? How do you devote your time? And of course, I'm raising a strong willed daughter in particular who asks a lot of questions, you know, why should I be fighting for others? 
I was in my answer would be it's because you are one of those. Unfortunately, you were. Um, I'm your mom, and you have to be aware of what is going on around you. Chasing a career, my like uh, uh, um, that uh, mention it in my end, but chasing your passion and what you love will last longer. And in my community, for example, I found myself becoming a coach even for women older than me. And I was able to do that because I created that time. I created that time to teach them basic skills, social skills, how to build a movement, for example. And as you know, Adeline, I, and I don't really like to put it out there, that I built a lot of women's movements. And I'm, and I'm really uh, uh, grateful. I'm saying that in a, uh, uh, I'm very humble and I mean it in a very socially positive way, uh, senses uh, uh, that we, we took time even when building FEVSAC, you know, the regional women platform on women, peace and security. It's, you know, taking the time to, to really building the capacity in them learning, learning what is peace, learning about the environment that they are before speaking, listen, learn, uh, register, being strategic. So this is like a bulk of the skill set that I was able to transfer to my children and to the people that are meant uh, at that. But before transferring the skills, you have to have the right mindset and you also have to create time for that. It's not something that you transfer overnight in split second but it's a journey and these people have to be willing to walk with you, your journey in your footstep for them to understand that your life 20 years later, uh, is, uh, it's not what it was before. So you've gone through uh, tries and tribulations, you've been labeled. So they have to understand as well how you're able to forge those skill sets and become the strong woman that you are today. So that's uh, how I, I transfer my skills by ensuring that these people are with me and they're walking, you know, uh, along my path. And hopefully that's how we'll make an impact together. But I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. I definitely understand what you're talking about. And I might just I might just add um and Mireille. I, I remember it, it was in 2016 when we created mm -hmm. FEPSAC. And for those of you who are, who are listening, we created FEPSAC. It's um Mireille at the time um was working with the United Nations base in Gabon, you know, the UNUCA office, and she had to come up with you know a way of involving women in you know, in publishing, magazine, you know, news, um, journalists and all those, you know, she had to involve them in, you know, to help to drive, you know, the agenda, one of the agendas on peace and security for the UN. And I guess this only came to play because you, you know, because this is something that you were building and this is something that you decided to, to, to involve others because based on that coalition, based on that relationship or that organization, association that we created we've been able to do amazing things and i can tell you each and every one of the eight women who started this who, who, who always you know um look back and say this is what she did and this is how she impacted my life so talking about transferring skills she didn't i think you Mira, what you did at that time was you didn't just you know sit there and say okay i can do this and you say okay you can do that but you actually came on the field isn't it you actually came on the field yes. you know, we've been to different countries we've organized yes. different initiatives you also gave us you know like you all have your magazines i remember all the time she was like you all have your magazines i want you girls to come up with one magazine that can accumulate all these things that you're doing you know that can talk about and you can all put that together because that is a legacy that you're building because post this period when you're all gone there's that magazine that's going to that's going to to, to, to reflect your work you know so i think it was a very good you know it was a very good thing for you to think about it that way because sometimes 
um how core that um that you use not just your interpersonal skills at the time but you also use the kind of you you, you 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 was a kind of problem solving because that was a problem we're trying to solve and you know that was the easiest way for us to 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 solve that problem we're all based in different part of africans and of africa and we're doing different things and um, but we can bring all this together and and own them so amazing i mean that's just one of the things that 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 you know that i that i can pin at this point but i know there's a lot more we i would have wanted to even add go further that it's uh, yes it's eight funding members but now you know it's more it has expanded more. yeah, yeah. And uh, four years, yes. still there. Yes. Together, yes. we are doing things. We uh, have the security agenda at yes. a regional level and yes. uh, 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 space as well. So it, it, it's it's you know that it's uh, uh, I mean you, you know you know it's been a long journey, uh, and and you know that the movement that I built in Cameroon as well. Uh, you know, I, I can go on and talk about that, but at the end of the day, it's about transferring long, long uh, 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 lasting uh, uh, skills that will also impact others' life. You see, because FEVSTAC, prior to FEVSTAC, there were no women network for the African sub region, you know, and the francophone sphere, uh, if we have to narrow down like that. But now people have a network of women that can amplify their voice. And these women happen to be editors, journalists and all, you know, that can really uh, uh, bring uh, uh, the light, their work in one magazine as well. So uh, uh, thank you for reminding me about that. I think, I think at this point, uh, Mireille, sorry yeah. to cut you, but I think at this point I want to talk about, um, I, just want to, I just want to horn, you know, when I, I sat, you know, in, in my apartment in Douala and Mireille called me to say she's coming to Cameroon to work. And I wasn't sure because I thought, you know, right now, and guess where she was in Boya, at the heart of the Anglophone crisis. And I think at that time you also organized a peace and security initiative yeah, yeah. on the, exactly. you know, on the, um, the name of the organization again is the Charret, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, and you brought all these activists from all over Africa and it was yeah. a big, massive, you know, conference that we did and mm -hmm. this was all about and i feel this is um i think this you you brought your negotiation um and mediation skills to play yeah. because i remember you had also just completed from the mo ibrahim was it the mandela foundation the mandela foundation right when, no, at that time, no, at that time uh, uh, when we went to, i had that um, um certification and mediation and negotiation I mean, the world needs to know that Adeline had put me in a lot of trouble, but good trouble though. <laughs> and you recall we're laughing about it, about uh, the genesis of how I really got involved in the, the Anglophone crisis and moving there and really working with women and, and creating women, uh, uh, two different women uh, movement as well. One was uh, Southwest and Northwest and the other one is now at the national level. But you started it, you know, you reached out and, and we started now working together. But sometimes it's also good to 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 acknowledge the behind the scene players, you know. I wouldn't know much about the Anglophone crisis if one day I did not reach out to you and said, Adeline, I am actually working on this crisis in Cameroon. Uh, I need help. Can you introduce me to the leaders? You know, do you remember? You remember that? Yes. From yes. that, yes. you the one who introduced me to Abu Bakr. To Abu Bakr, exactly. And now, yes. And now yes. Fighting for yes. Yes. Uh, yes. I mean, we did a lot of things together, and we brought an other network. But I don't think this is the platform. But <laughs> to talk about that, but, but we, we, we're talking about legacy. You know, we're talking about the things that people will remember you for. And yeah, yeah, I think, but, yeah. but, yes, yes, but, but it's it's about. Uh, uh, talking about legacy, which is, yes, it's great. However, you have to also be mindful that a lot of behind the scene work was done. And this were done by Ensong 
heroes that have never got recognition for their work. You know, I can name a lot of people that were behind the scene working terrorists and we even had a group together working where most of the leaders were were on the ground. But um but it is what it is, you, you know it. And from that, and, and I'm, I'm glad that my time in Cameroon, uh, at least there, uh, 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 the work that I have done and created is still there. Uh, recognition or not, I've never, and you know that I was never there for recognition anyway. Uh, uh, and, and I'm proud that at least some of the women are still fighting to be at the forefront and, and I've met amazing people there. Uh, and you know, and you know some of the people that I've met, like uh, you know, Sisi Kutabe, who's a now a close friend. I've understood, you know, how uh, the root cause of a conflict and how to be, you know, part of the solution. So I've met a lot of, you know, Cardinal to me and a lot of uh, leaders as well. So I am okay working in the back ground behind the scene but at least i am pleased to see that the work is there and thank you for the recognition and thank you for acknowledging that a lot of things yeah, are I, think, I think i think it's it it. Mirel, i think it's important to to truly um recognize people who, who play major parts you know and to be honest I, I keep telling everybody who cares to hear that i remember calling Mirai i said Mirai, my friend is you know is in the middle of this i want you to reach out to him and that is how you know so yes as you said maybe this is not the platform but sometimes it is it is good to just throw things in a lot of things have happened during the Andrew phone crisis and Thanks to your skills and your position at the time, you were able to provide timely solutions, you know, and solving problems. So problem solving skills. So all these things are the things that we learn at work and we bring them in our community. And, you know, so, yeah. But some of the skills, skills so the hard work. Work. <laughs> you know, you're like, you're like, you have to be a problem solving. Yes. 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 But yes. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. No, thanks to you. <laughs> so, Inda, let's let's get you on the scene now. Um, you have over 20 years. You're an IT consultant. You're a freelancer. You've learned these amazing skills at work, and also you've grown in a, in a community and in an environment where you've been able to to learn things. Where how do you transfer this thing in your actual life now? You know how how would you say you're transferring this? I think I want to take two steps back and um, acknowledge Mireille's work. Um, but no, it's true. It's got to be said because a lot of us are out here coasting, aren't we? We're hearing the thing happening in Cameroon and we're thinking, yeah, oh dear, this is happening. And we roll over and go to sleep because we're not there. <laughs> but Mireille is from the Democratic Republic of Congo. It puts us a bit to shame or quite a lot to shame, I should say. So thank you, Mireille. It's got to be said. And it, it, it then brings home some of the responsibility that our parents back home are saying, come on, guys, we need to be serious about this. You know, um, real things are going on here. But you almost feel powerless because it's been going on for so long, you don't know what to do or how to do it. Um, so uh, we have a, a very placid nature as Cameroonians anyway. So we just carry on and just stay under the, the covers. But so thanks to the work of, of people like you and, and, and through platforms like this, it might be a side conversation, but then it might also expose a chance for other people to find out, hey, what can I do, even in a small way, um, to acknowledge and foster the work of or empower other people and you don't know where solutions might come from which quarters they might come from so thank you Mirel. um so going back to your question adeline well 20 years gosh it's been a long time I, i'm in a in a capacity as a business um test manager now in a migration um, project for n power so they're moving from a legacy solution to a brand spanking new system, which is going to save them tons of money over the years. Uh, that's the plan anyway. And I've been working in quite a few projects like this over the years, but my, my career didn't just start as this. Originally, I started as a test analyst when I left my agency course for God knows how many years ago now, um, evolved into being a business analyst. And then um, back to my first true love for testing, which is, I think, true to my very good personality for being critical and analytical. But then I think the, the examples I want to quote come from my work as um, a BA, a business analyst. And in that, one of the things that I, I took was um, bearing in mind the fact that one of the main human needs is to be significant. People um, want validation. They need significance. They need to 
be relevant. So in that, the, the, when I went into NPAR, which is what I went in to be one of the lead BAs before I evolved into this role, was to make sure that um, the skills for stakeholder management, the skills for managing expectations, um, the skills for getting buy-in um, were honed and sharpened to the point. But also not only that, being able to influence with or without authority, I think is something we don't realize. We often think you influence people when you have authority. You can influence quite well without authority. So those skills um, being refined and honed over the years, um, my years as a business analyst is something that I've been able to transfer quite nicely to my home life, to my community life, um, because it's, it's about how you make people feel ultimately. We were talking about your um, assistant, Ashu, and the first thing I saw when I spoke to her, within 15 seconds, I thought, wow, she's empowered. And knowing you, Adelina, I, I could see that she felt trusted. She felt her work was recognized. Um, so uh, she felt significant. And, and in that way, you get the best out of people. So you try and do that with, with your children. You try and start from when they're young, make them understand that their opinions are valuable. They're significant. You may think we do that in the cuddles, in the this, but we need to hear words. We need to see things being done. There needs to be ways in which we do it. Um, also managing expectations. So just earlier on today, I went to town with my daughter, school starting next week. And my older daughter, um, we'd made a list and she shouldn't pipe up to say, oh, mommy, I need a note, um, a notepad, a planner. And because we were in WH Smith and there was this fancy notebook, she had to have it. I'm like, you've got tons of the things lying at home. Um, why do we need one? Let's look for a proper planner if you have one. So in, in writing that list, I was managing expectations that this is what we were going to get. So when we get to town and the scope starts to, to creep and my, 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 um, my expenditures potentially starts to increase, I'm going to be like, no. So it, it, we don't really formalize it, but we start. We sometimes need to call things by their names. So managing expectations to say, hey, this is what we're doing. Um, and you are the stakeholders in this, even though you are not actually the ones um, responsible for the trip or accountable because the money is not getting spent by you. Um, I'm going to manage your expectations um, and I'm, I'm going to set the scene that this is how it's done. So there's, there's things like that, or even something like public speaking. We think, oh, I don't like public speaking, but we do it every day. We do public speaking every day in our homes. And so I, I don't, I'm not sure where I actually heard that, and it just changed everything for me. Um, in our homes, we have at least maybe two, three, four, five people, as in our case, and, and, and that is your public. That's your first public that you do. So those are the kind of skills that, you know, I used to, to leverage um, from my work into my home, how to manage the requirements of the children, because, it, you know, the children abroad these days, they're full of requirements, aren't they? And, and sometimes full of judgments. And you just think, goodness, I wonder if this is how I was growing up, isn't it? So you've got to manage what their requirements are. And... Being a business analyst really helped me to lift and shift those skills from work into home. Um, and in some ways that have worked quite nicely. Um, sometimes they haven't worked because, you know, people are people um, and they'll be what they have to be. But we, we have to think it's the soft skills oftentimes that we can lift and shift. Uh, my dad was an engineer by trade. I learned perseverance from him through the fact that he would be building an oil mill and the recipe for the, the product would not be right, but he would persevere and persevere and persevere until he got the formula right. So there's, it wasn't necessarily his craft or his love for engines, but it was the, the quality that kept him going. So there's, there's, there's different ways of looking at it. Um, but I would say from my career, from my life's work, is um, making sure I keep the fact that I acknowledge people's significance. I manage the stakeholders in my life, in, in my community, um, um, by managing their expectations, by making sure they're heard, by getting people's buy-in. Because when I first started at NPOWER, the first release, so it's a, a two-stage migration, the first release of the gas customers, um, I went in the middle of that project and the way it was being managed was a bit shambolic. And it was right through to the end of when we were getting migration 
over and there was really nothing there was not much i could do to turn things around at that point but by the time we got to the second phase of migration i had to make sure we had a framework in place which meant that way before we even got to the point of validating the data we needed to move across the buy-in of the senior stakeholders had been sought. So everybody was part of that process. So you get their buy-in, you get their trust. And then the people who now report to those senior stakeholders um, are the ones running the show and the senior stakeholders are like, I know what you're doing. I don't need to be involved because my opinion has been sought. You know, I feel valued. I feel significant. I know what's going on. I know what's expected. I know the roadmap. I know the framework. I've signed up to it. So if problems come up, up, we're going to work together to resolve it because I'm part of the process. So um, that's something that we really need to, to keep in mind. I think with everything else, I think even in, sometimes we might not do it because we tend to separate home and work life, but but those are the kind of things that have, um, have transferred from work to home life for me. Wow, Inda, I think I think that's a <laughs> that's a very wow. a very powerful way to look at it. I mean, I, I didn't I didn't look at it that way, but Mire, you agree with me that she, you know, my dear, as I, I, I I'm more than agree with you because I, I, I feel by now I was viewers can already tell that Inda is a legacy driven person. But you can see that though, even the passion you bring, you're able to merge the two. And I think that's what, and I, I and I thank you for this platform because that's what people have to see, you know, that it is, it's not going to be easy, but it's feasible. You know, you are talking to a, both a career and a legacy driven person. It's not given, that skills is not given to anybody. You know, I won't be able to, to kind of the two when i found my calling i just focus now on my legacy and my calling oh. for me for a year i was like okay fine it comes it comes it doesn't that's okay but you have the the world and and by the world i also want to nail down to african women we have no excuse because you are an exemplary leader that we should all follow and and thank oh. you yes yeah, definitely. i think i think in that um listening to you um and Murray, I'll, I'll i'll mix this to it it gives me you know it gave me um a kind of a, an idea well not an idea but it brought me back to the realization of what i always say to my staff to myself to my anybody who wants to listen that mm. you need to show up you need to speak up you exactly. need to play your part exactly. because if you don't show up if you don't speak up, mm -hmm. you're going to be left behind. So if something is not working and you feel there is something that you can do about yeah. it, go for it. Yeah. Absolutely. Go for it. So Absolutely. transferring these skills, you know, I, I feel it's quite important, you know, very important for us to have mentioned it. But let me take some, let me see if we have any questions or contributions from our listeners. Let me welcome those, those who are joining. Um, Daniel, hello from Bumye <laughs> Vicky, hello from Bali. Maggie, hi from the UK. Kletus, it's really educative show. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Claire. Uh, Kalistus, thank you. Angel, hello from Boya. Harriet, hello. Uh, Goretti, I love that acknowledging unsung heroes, they're a big part of legacy yeah. building. Exactly. Indeed, that. Thank you, Mireille. Um, Stella, great program. Thank you. Wow. Tessie, joining late as I had some back-to-back -back meeting. Welcome on the show. How do I leave a legacy where I work? That is a question. Sophie, hello. Very key in any change movement. So we have a question from Daniel and he wants to know how he can leave a legacy where he works. So who will want to go first? <laughs> yeah, but I think I think the overall, how do we leave a legacy? I think that that should that should cover. You know. But I think we have to uh, add a little bit more protector. You know, it also for me was because if he works at the UN, then I'll tell him, well, this is how you can go for, you know, to jump for P4 to P5. If he works in the CSO setting, so it's all different. And also where um, 
what professional at what stage of his professional career it is because uh if he's at entry level so i mean it's quite uh uh, uh, well, uh, uh but i would i personally would like to know more because if you are telling him to put passion it might be at the wrong place you know if you are telling him hey just keep on being uh, uh, focusing on the work that you do, do it well, make sure that you listen to, and you know, to your, your, your leaders, to your boss, you know, so it's a, a lot of way. Just a little bit of help, we will, a little bit of hint, and then we'll be able to, I'll be able to respond on that. Personally. Okay. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I will, I will, I will, I will hope he's listening to you to respond to that. But in there, is there something you might want to say on this, leaving a legacy? Uh, it's, it's, it's generally it's about genuinely caring um, for the advancement of others, um, mm -hmm. generally wanting to be of service, because people can feel the energy of that, can't they? Um, so, and, and they warm up to you. We, and we underrate kindness. We underrate empathy um, in, in how we deliver our work. You, you might just think, okay, my capacity as a business, I'm going in there to help um, a solution come from um, the business user's head, the requirements into something physical that they're going to be using to make their day-to-day -day jobs better. But that requirement has been born out of a pain point, right? Somebody might have a task that takes them four or five hours because they're using spreadsheets and this document and that Word document and you know several different things to achieve one process but you're delivering a system where everything is integrated and is in one system now that's a pain point that your work is removing and and that's something that's going to make the journey into work um feel a bit better so we need to really understand um underneath what it is um, why we're delivering the need that we're delivering. And when we start to empathize at that level, um, we start to have better conversations, I think. So really genuinely care for what other people, um, what the needs of others are. But also, um, like you said, Adeline, show up, um, be consistent, have integrity, um, and, and, and be known for your non-negotiables, whatever they are, what are your values? I think on Goretti's show, um, your friend Vivi mentioned your, the personal culture. What is your personal culture? That was such a fantastic way of putting it. What is your, if somebody were to describe you, how would they describe you? Because that is a part of your legacy. That is expressed in your work, right? So um, have those things. Be, um, be courageous enough to have a set of frame, to have a set of ideals that you work towards. Um, and, 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 and I think with those sort of things, you will, you will make progress. You know, you can leave a legacy by being disruptive, you know, at work. You, you can. So <laughs> you can. But that's, it, very, that's very true. You okay, can. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I'm hungry. 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 I'm uh, our African leaders, our dictators, they also left a legacy. So we have to be cautious also when we really clearly articulate and define legacy as well. So you have all these people left a legacy that, you know, impacted negatively and positively our lives. You know, we are being impacted by it. How many have fled the countries because of that particular legacy? So we have, these are questions, thought provoking questions that we have to to also discuss, hopefully you will create another space for that. It is great to leave a legacy at work, but what is your line of work? Is your line of work really aligned with your true beliefs or what? You know, what you, you wanna do in life? Is it really impacting the, the, 
the, the lives of others, you know? So, so these are the questions that I also had. Yeah. I think, I think Mireille, I feel you're, you're quite right about what kind of legacy are you living in? Is it a positive one, a negative one? So, and and in that, I, I feel, I think you, you, you kind of wrap up, you know, the positive, the positive legacy aspect, which yeah. is about, uh, you know, showing empathy, playing your part, consideration for others in particular and your personal mm -hmm. culture and how do you want people to, to think of you? Mm -hmm. Do you want them to look up, think of you as the Hitler or, you know, so yeah. at the end of the day, uh, I feel it's about what kind of legacy as Mireille said you want to leave. And Mireille, I'll, I'll tell you for free that most of these, our presidents or our leaders who are holding these positions for so long, they know they are living a positive legacy. I will tell you. <laughs> Because you girls, you, you've mentioned, right? Both of you mentioned it's about the conscience, you know. What yeah, do you, yeah. you know, it's about what you believe. It's about your belief. Mm -hmm. so if my president, for example, feels that I'm going to be in power for 50 years, it's a legacy. Mm -hmm. He believes that what he's doing is great because he keeps saying, Le Cameroon, Emergence, 2035. You know, <laughs> your president in 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 co in, in um, RDC, they had to root him up at one. You know, you you have long histories of all these presidents with all this. You know, so all the wars and all the things. So these people, trust me, they know they're living a legacy. They will not say it's a negative legacy. They will say it's a positive one. But us, the onlooker, and this goes back to what both of you are saying or have been saying. That's about how you make people feel the empathy. Yeah. What is it that, how do you make them feel? It's about how people feel and what people are going to say about you long after you've gone. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Oh, we have somebody new on the show. Hi, Michelle. Legacy by innovating or impacting okay. others. Exactly. Because once you innovate, you're never going to be forgotten. Yeah. yeah. Never. And Ramses says, I felt like I'm on track with building a legacy for myself. But then again, I think I should halt and have a real thing. Madame Da and Mireille, is it okay to stop and have a real thing, strategize at times, or should I just keep going? I would say I would say keep going um, because life is, is is a journey. It's a continuous journey. Um, and as long as you have that consciousness of wanting to be intentional about doing things right, then you're on the right track because um, the only failure would be in not trying or in not taking a step forward. Uh, like Mirelle said, most of um, her, her skills have come or achievements have come through, through failures. You fail and you try again and you do it and you learn how not to do it. Think about how many times um, it took, how many tries it took to get the light bulb going. So we're not nearly there yet. Um, so it's, it's to keep going, but keep learning. Um, have a curious mindset. Be teachable. So you can learn and improve because we learn, we can learn from everything from anybody every, even even the most unexpected places right we can learn um or the most unexpected situations so i would say with the mindset you have you're on the right track keep going keep learning and keep improving because taking advice is one thing using it is another so mm -hmm use the advice that you take um as long as you can discern that is the right advice for your path that is um, used and of course you'll be on the right track exactly exactly uh i will say it you know like uh diet said uh keep on do do not because at the moment where you stop and we think mm. that's when you lose your purpose yes okay? and you look at all the hard work that you have bent for X amount of years, it will just go down the drain. But keep on going, but have uh, a listening ears, the willingness to listen to others. And I think that's what also helped shaped me because there was a moment, that's when you also find your calling because there was a moment in my life when I was in my career path and when I met my calling, I was ready. And I was ready to take that risk uh, it, it was it was a calculated risk, but I'm glad I took it. I'm glad I went without thinking. I just went and I kept on making mistakes. 
mm-hmm. and being misunderstood and all of that. Mm-hmm. But for me, it was okay because I knew somehow there will be light at the tunnel and also have uh, a build a faith legacy because it takes a lot of, you have to have faith on yourself, but also faith in God. I don't know what religion you are, but just have faith in your higher power as well. That mm. whatever path that you're taking, it is, uh, it might not be the right or wrong. There's no wrong or right path. It's just a, a, a path that is full of, you know, uh, stones, anything is just ambiguous. It's sometimes actually, it's not even clear. You don't even have a clear path until you realize your purpose on earth. And then everything start to be clearer. And then you start building one stone at a time. So once you stop building, believe me, you will just regret it. So keep on going and it's okay. It's okay. One day you will celebrate your, your, your failures. failures. So I think I'd like to show this, this input. Innovation is very much important, especially in the century we are living in. I think he's still, ma- he's still making mention to innovation versus, you know, once something is innov- it's an innovation, you're going down into, a, you know, into history. That's a fact. And he also continued, negative legacy, destruction. This has no place in our world. Exactly. That is true. It has no place in our world, but unfortunately, we live in this world where people just turn to, and he even continue by saying, you will say Ben Laden left legacy, but to my opinion, I think legacy should be positive to impact others. I think, yeah, the, ideally, this is a world we would like to, to live. Um, this, is a, this is a world we would like to live in, and... Uh, you know, but these people with, with negative, you know, some people, we, we, this is, I mean, I'm speaking about me and I, I'm sure you ladies will agree, but this is, this is person that some people will consider, legacy is about the people, you know, so I might consider um, my president, I might say he's not a legend, you know, and <laughs> someone else will say, oh my God, Bin Laden is the most amazing thing that has ever happened, happened to us. So whatever the case, be it negative or positive, I think it just depends on who is at the receiving end. I don't know if it is, uh, but the majority, I'll say, what the world sees, I mean, we, 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 we can map it that way. I don't know if I'm right. I think, Mirel, this is your, this is your area of, of, of expertise and <laughs> If you want to throw in a word to Michael so that he can, you know, to Michelle. Sorry, no, Michael. No, no, I think you've said, you've said, it, said it all. all. You've said, said it all. Yeah. Um, what the previous time, you know, um, living a, 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 for Bin Laden, like you said, he, uh, people might think that he might have left, you know, a, a, a negative legacy. And some people might say, no, he actually uh, also kind of uh, show how, uh, and and I'm being cautious when I say that, you see when you are used to holding a nation as a strong power, but it just takes someone that came out of the blue and, and just show you that, you know what, even the strongest in our mind in this world can be destroyed in a split second. So it's always about the approach, you know, how you approach it, because still someone can leave a negative uh, uh, um, legacy, but there's always a way you can turn that into a positive. And that negative might actually work in in, in a positive uh, uh, sense for a positive legacy for another nation, you know. Let's just be honest right now at the moment. Many will will say uh, that Donald Trump, of course, legacy, it's negative, blah, blah, blah. But as an African, you are looking at Donald Trump legacy might not actually affect Africa. You see? So you have to know how it might be negative in America, but it might not really technically impact, you know, affect Africa per se. And when when we even talking now about the COVID narrative, COVID has affected, you know, the US to Europe, but with great mind and, and, and strategy, COVID might actually also be a, a window of opportunity for, you know, for Africa. So you have either way, it's just how you approach the narrative of legacy, positive or negative, that's that. I won't kind of develop when it comes to definitions. Thank you. I I think, (laughs) you know, 
All right. Let's track from it. Let's track from it. Yeah. I'll, I'll take I'll take on to um, Simbarashi back here. Is it only that you are only eligible for leaving the legacy if you have great achievement and prospective career? Because particularly for someone like me in my last year in high school, how can I leave a legacy at an early age before I even finish pursuing my career? It hasn't started. <laughs> I, I think it's brilliant that you're asking that question. Um, uh, at this stage in your life. And I, it's never too early to, to start. Um, my girls are 12 and 11, and, and they've already, they're already in the process of doing that. It's about um, finding out, I think, who you are. Um, what do you, because by now, there will be signs, there will be, there will be, a, there will be a notion of, of what it is that you're passionate about. And it could be that how you start to leave your legacy is just by, um, by thinking more about it, because it, part of Steve Jobs' work with Apple was really finding out who he was, what his personal style and preferences were um, as a person, what it is that he wanted out of Apple. And that really was projected in the product that they put out there. Um, so he spent a lot of time doing that. But by virtue of the fact that you're where you are and you're starting to think along those lines, um, the best place to start would be finding out re who really, and that will evolve over time anyway. It's, it's not set in stone but really getting to know who you are um, and what you love doing and and those things will start to put you in the direction of um, developing the skills that come on the, at the back of finding out who you are what it is that you love to do what makes your soul sing because if I were to look back at myself at that age I would have loved to be able to ask the question you're asking now um, so for me, doing that is, is amazing. Talk to people, find people who can mentor you in the ways of knowing how to find out what it is that you are about. Um, start to build a legacy of being hardworking, of being consistent. Those are things that you can do without um, a career or, or a skill or, 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 or of, being, of having integrity. Because when you put yourself in that discipline, when the chance comes, you would have amassed a lot of the skills that people that have a career don't have. Because some people have a career, they haven't got the discipline or the consistency to evolve to the next level. So they stay stuck. But if you've disciplined yourself, you wake up early, you're organized, you're on time, you you um, you you partition or you time box your time um, as you should do. Everything has its place and time. By the time you're old enough to start to use those things, you you will be um, a, quite a way ahead, I would think. I don't know if you agree, Mireille, Adeline. I think I, Mireille, you first. No, oh, I, 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 I agree. Okay, and, and reflecting back as well, you know, it's all about the, the foundation as well. Mm -hmm. uh, as you mentioned, you know, you spoke about your dad. So you already had strong foundation. Mm -hmm. And and I myself, my mother, we all have that one person in your family that believes in you, that believes that you can do it all. And and that's where uh, adding to what dad had said, find surround yourself by people that will always push you, push mm -hmm. you to go further, push you to go beyond your no uh, your nose goes to see beyond your nose, to see so far that you can even see the horizon, but you know you are going somewhere. That mm -hmm. will be my advice to you. And you will see it will all come into full circle. Once you're there, you're like, oh my God, I had to walk this path. And sometimes, you know what? You might not even be recognized uh, for it. Yeah. You might not even receive you no know, any accolades. In contrary, the person, the people that you're fighting for, they are the one that will be amassing all the accolades, and you'll be like, "Oh my god!" Oh my god. But you know what? It is okay because at some point in your life, even after when you're gone, people will recognize you. So your name will come up somehow. How many of us now? Uh, um, when I was Googling a few um, months ago, when I, I was given my children an assignment, uh, uh, yes, I'm raising activists as well, like me, strong real, uh, 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 children, that, that's really, you know, true activists. And sometimes I even fear for them. Uh, 
because I wish I was that as fearless at their age. Uh, and so we are doing a researching on African heroes. And we have, we almost had no women, you know, a list of women that came up. And then back of my head, I'm like, but all of these men, someone was behind it, you know, it was always women. And that's when I started researching about women. That's when you learn that, oh, my God, actually, Kimpa Vinta did this for, uh, you know, the DRC back in the days. Oh, my God, Swen so did this in Angola. So you started now with like, oh, my God, these women never receive any recognition. But at least the names went down to history, you know. Uh, the fact that you can Google and have some information about them, it tells you that sometimes, you know what, you might not be recognizing your century in your time, but it might take hundreds or 200 centuries later, you know, <laughs> a thousand centuries later for you to be recognized. So don't go for the recognition. Just mm. to go by yourself, by yourself. right people, right. And, and be able and be able. I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about the listening skills because that really helped me, listening to advising others, yes. And I, I, think I, I totally agree with you, ladies, but I just want to add something. I just want to add something. It's not a bird. I just want to add something. Um, I, I think I, I graduated from high school maybe 30 years ago. And till today, I can remember the senior prefect because he left a legacy. You can yeah. pick up some leadership skills, some leadership position at schools. You can be a library preferred. You could be just somebody to mentor those who are younger as as and um, that said mentoring those who are younger than you in junior classes that's a legacy you're you're you're, you're living you know so you don't you don't have to be in a corporate setting or in a work mood for you to leave that legacy so pick up these activities in school be part of some clubs and play your part show up and you'll be fine i will go forward just so that we catch up on some of the comments which i think is really important i know we are maybe 20 15 minutes to go so i'll just sh share um okay we've, we've seen this i'll go on that it really depends on what you want to be known for the easiest way to do this is to have some strong personal values that you are not shy to promote Tessie is just echoing what both girls have been saying here today mm -hmm. and michelle said we think uh, we should make a difference between i i, I love this michelle thank you Thank you so much. I want I want to be able to understand this as well. We should make we should make a difference between legacy and history. Also, I think legacy should be what others can duplicate. Anything other than that is not legacy. Sorry for mentioning Hitler. <laughs> so I, I I feel this is important. Does any one of you girls want to go? Want, want to add to this? But I think it's a really how do we differentiate between legacy and history? I, I, can I just say quickly? I can maybe a little bit more mainly. Yes. Um, can I say quickly that, um, that um, as much as we just would want um, to be a part of the foundation, and that a part, um, we also must call out that right. even those people who did um, things that impacted the world so negatively left a legacy of some sort, like we go back to the point of being conscious or unconscious about it. Because if you think about it, even a stillborn child leaves a legacy. It could be a legacy of pain, but they do leave a legacy. So they've only maybe not lived at all, but they've left a legacy. So we, we cannot look at just one side of the coin without looking at the other, because if we don't look at the other, we wouldn't know what it is that we need to be doing as opposed to what it is we don't need to be doing. And I think that's just the thought that came to my mind. What is it that we want to duplicate other than what we don't want to duplicate? I think, Michelle, it's a very fair point you make. Um, but it's also it's good for the system to be shocked by the things we don't want to do. System shocked. <laughs> system shocked. I think I think that um, that's your point of view, and I, I totally agree with you. Totally agree with you. And uh, Mirai, is that will you agree with that as well? Of course, I do agree. With, uh, the, 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 to add to um, uh, shock about legacy versus history. Legacy is it's handed down, it's handed over, you know, it's handed over. And I don't, and history is what you really make of that legacy. So that's how I see it. Um, yeah. 
that that's all. That's what I can add. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, I feel I feel it, it is oh. fair for us to talk about history and legacy because sometimes it it. we just yeah. yeah. So and he also said sorry for mentioning you know for mentioning Hitler that Hitler did leave a legacy. Today the the the, the, the Jews for example they will have all you know you, you know what they will, they will think about him and you know the, the the impact that it had on them. And I have I have this contribution from Rudy Karim. Legacy should be innovative, sustainable, and it should positively impacts people this is exactly the same thing that michelle is is saying that is true you're very correct but as we we've said unfortunately the world is what it is today and it is what it is so we just cannot we have to look at you know the coin from from two sides but legacy that we celebrate uh the legacy that impacts people positively so laura hayward what should what would you say to older women coming back into a technical market which do you use most your technical knowledge or your life skills i have both hi laura laura used to be my manager back in the day thank you for watching laura <laughs> Um, I'm not sure who wants to take this, or should I take my place? <laughs> my duo sister can take it. She got both. <laughs> okay, so um, Laura, I think um, over the years, um, there's there's several things that we there's several things that we accumulate in our life experience. I really the technical experience comes into it um but also it it plays a part in what level you're going back into the workplace at so um if you're going into a, a at the managerial level definitely both because it's about um knowing how to organize people to deliver what it is you want them to deliver and sometimes not even necessarily knowing how to do it yourself but life skills um in that position will probably play a greater part because then you know um how to the word manage people is um Oh, but you, you know how to work with people, how to collaborate with people, how to make them feel included and valued and um, empowered enough to deliver what it is they can to the best of their ability. So life skills for me plays a big part because it's people. Really, ultimately, it's people, and they all each have their quirks, um, their, their, their unique ways that come into this melting pot that we call work, and we can't box them in. So um, I think in, in my capacity now as business data test manager at Empower, I've really, really found that once that framework for how the second phase of migration was going to work was set and people felt empowered and fully aware of what it is that they needed to do and trusted to do it, um, they ran with it. They, they just ran with it and we just came back at the, the right places and just formed part of those blocks that just made the thing plain sailing. And, and in that way, it comes up to the fact that you make management job, the job of your management easier, really, when you are, you are running um, your piece of the puzzle in such a way that just makes things fit. You manage the, the people according to their quirks, according to their needs, and it makes things fit. So life skills, um, technical skills but can be overrated. We can learn those things. Um, life skills, how we learn them and apply them is quite a thing. So um, both, but more life skills, depending on the level. Obviously, if you need to be hands-on, then you need the technical skills or whatever skills it is you need to do the job. Thank you. I think I think that's an amazing way to look at it. That's a great way to look at it. Mireille, would you want to add something to that? No, no, no. I, I, I'll, I'll agree with you that. I'll like, agree with you that. My children, if you don't have life and social skills, there's yeah. no way for you to be able to climb the ladder. Mm -hmm. If you are aiming high, life skills and social skills should be a, a huge component. Mm, absolutely. And in her, in her older women, older women, it also brings her at a more comparative advantage at what she had to bring in the company. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think you have an advantage because of your years experience and also your age. You know, um we, we always used to talk about when you want to get someone in, you know, in 
you know, when you want to get someone in. And I feel the, just like fine wine, you know, the older, the better, because they get things done and, you know, they bring these things. You know, we also say these days that the younger ones straight off uni, uh, you know, they have their own contribution that they, but if you really want things to be the way you want, or if you really want things to take um, a leap forward or a leap further down, then the, the panache is, you know, a very diverse and flexible and working environment is, is essential. So we have a question from uh, it where again, what would you say to young people who wish to build their legacy? What should be their drive when building their legacy? I think she might have missed the first part, but if you can just quickly say something to Karim about what should be their drive when building their legacy, then that would be awesome. Who's taking this? Um, so we talked about we talked about who you are as a person. Um, that's one of the most important things I think you can know, whether it's in your personal life or it's in your professional life. Um, getting to know your core why, you know, what is your why, what is your purpose, that will enable you um, to set what is non-negotiable, set your boundaries. Um, boundaries is a big thing. It can be professional or it can be personal. But the lack of those boundaries can really um, cause us a lot of pain because it can cause you to assume false responsibilities, which will distract you from what your focus should be. So um, know who you are and set the boundaries around what, who you are, because what am I going to do versus what am I not going to do? Um, but also have integrity, be consistent, show up. Some of the things Adam was saying, um, and and be be disciplined. I think learn those skills that that may not come so naturally because of I, I'm not sure what your um, how old you are, but learn those skills which may not come so naturally. Be um be intentional about the way you do things. It, it, being intentional is one of it's one of the things that will get you thinking um, about every step, every decision, every action that you're taking, even the mistakes that you make and how you recover from them. You need to be intentional about that. So um, those are little various ways that we can um, uh, define um, define or, or build a legacy as we, in uh, in your in your case at the moment, I'm guessing you're a young person, but as you get to grow older, you apply those things, then you bring courage by the fact that you've done those things again and again and again, and you, you find that you're more accountable because you're, you're, you trust your actions more, you trust your decisions more, um, because you've practiced the discipline of getting to know who you are and how you function and what your set of values are. So um, those would be the things that you do, and then you can do more than that because ultimately your why, your purpose, and your pattern can determine your life's work if you're lucky. For some people, it might not, um, which um, that is another topic for another day, but yay. We can't hear you, Adeline. We can hear you. We can hear you. I'm just popping this 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 um contribution from Maggie Tetapak. Humanity comes in different shades, forms, and colors, both positive and negative, and all have their purpose in our universe through our consciousness. Hopefully, we choose the right yeah. path. Very yeah. correct. And Tessie also, Laura, this is for you. Tessie will say, I will say both. Um, you need both the life skills, just like what you girls have been saying, but that you need to know how to dish out the appropriate dose, especially if you're new to a field, since you're looking at going back into, you know, into work. And Samantha, what if the people around you doesn't understand those barriers? Hmm. I think that's for you. What if they don't understand that, those barriers? How do you sell your values to the people around you? you be consistent. As long as, as, long as you, they're tried and tried and, 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 and not um, hurt or harm, be consistent. It's being consistent being persistent they will have to get it i don't think anything good comes easy because if your if your boundaries are negotiable um you start to erode on who you are um and the essence of who you are and and then you start to enable people by virtue of giving up um your core values you start to enable people um, to deal with you in ways that you may not appreciate so you need to be consistent and persistent about um 
doing it politely um, and putting forward what your boundaries are and doing it regardless. Yeah, and it's one of the things we need to learn as women. We really need to be able to communicate our boundaries and do so early in the process because change is hard. I work in change. Change is hard. Um, so it's better for everybody involved to be quick um, and polite about setting boundaries. Yeah, uh, change is hard, as we say that. Change is hard and change is costly as well. But I believe that when you are building your legacy, it is your personal journey as well. People are not supposed to understand your journey. People are not supposed to understand your barriers until they see the finished product. Only you, that is your individual process. But along your journey, you actually meet people divine connection as I call them, I personally call them. They're a key, a response, a solution to one of those unlocking your barrier and your boundaries. So you have to be mindful and cautious also not to miss those windows of opportunities. And sometimes that is the mistakes that we make. We, uh, and, and I'm sure we've, all of us have heard of season, it's your season, but don't miss it because when your season comes as well, it's when you have all those boundaries, failures, everything that is there and then you missed it. So you have to be really disciplined, focused, because at the end of the day, it's the final product. It's your final journey that people will look at. People will never know the behind the scene and your struggles, all of it. They will never know until you say something or you tell, or someone that was there with you can share that story. They always look at your 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 illustrious uh, biography. It's like, oh my God, that she's a writer, she's this. Oh, I'm sure she had it easy. Until you hear her story, you're like, oh my God. So that's that. So you have to be mindful that when you are building your, your legacy, and, 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 I'm, and I'm happy to be sharing the space with that because she has that duality of being a career-driven and legacy-driven, and she had that mindset as well. So uh, be cautious, and hopefully you are taking some of the, uh, the humble advices that you are giving you seriously. I think this brings us to, I mean, Mireille, thank you so much. Your, your, your last point just brings us to the, you know, the connection in, in building legacies. I mean, um, I'm not going to ask the last two questions because we've already covered that. But what I want us to use the last 10 minutes that we have is to talk about the legacies that we're building. And um, in there, I know you, 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 you have your, 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 your chili oil and I know you have the, 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 girls and the books and i would love you to tell us how you are you know how how are you doing this how are you achieving this you're a mom you're a wife you're a friend you are an entrepreneur you are a career woman tell us how are you building your legacy <laughs> let's start let, let me start by giving a background well i'm not going to give a background you're going to give the background of the books so i want you to tell us first the one and then second the second so let me go to our images and then i'll pop up the girls on screen and you tell us a little bit about them <laughs> thank you thank you Adeline. thank you um oftentimes we do things and they just you you go with the flow. You take one step at a time, and you, and you get some good days, some big achievements, and some low days. Um, but you get to the destination, and you look back, and you think, "Wow, thank God!" You know, um, he's been there all through the way. Um, but there's something that Mirel just touched on, which um, before I go to this business of the legacy, I'll try and be quick. It's we see the we see the story. You know, there's this glory. You don't know what that journey has been. You don't know what the pain has been. Um, uh, with my with my career, um, Laura, you might agree. You might not. I don't know. I, I I did believe that I was quite good at what I did at various stages in my in my role. But one thing I found that had, in a way, held me back. A few years later, it was it was imposter syndrome. And it's a big deal, I think, for us women, just second guessing myself all the time. Am I good enough? Am I not? Am I good enough? And, and in a lot of ways, that was a huge part in making sure that my journey did not start the way it needed to start um, long before now. Um, but I went to, to Empower and I had two bosses and it was the trust, the way they gave it, the way they freely gave it, the acknowledgement that they freely gave, um, 
that. And maybe I'd just gotten older. I just really stopped caring. Um, and then it's just like, oof. You do things, you make mistakes, you learn and you implement lessons and you move on. So we we get to a point in our story where it's more glory, but the journey is hard sometimes. But you have to trust yourself, trust, trust, trust yourself to be able to do it. I think that's one thing I've been able to do more and more and more. Um, because when my dad died in 2014, it was a shock to the system. Um, he'd been my dad and my mom for so long. Um, so there was a huge gaping hole in there. So um, it's in the house, chili oil is really um, partly to to help his legacy live on and partly to to um, to find a place to put the pain, I think, because every time something happens with that, I feel a part of my dad's story is being shared, our history is being shared, because he used to bring this chili oil to us every time he visited in England. My aunt, who is only Auntie Maggie, my sister and I would want some chili, and we're like, I won't bring powdered chili, it loses potency after a while, I'll bring chili oil, and everybody loved it. And I went to a John Lee conference, um, 2018, I think, with an aunt of mine, Auntie Jackie, and, and he kept droning on about what is in your hand? What is there something that you can do? What is in your hand? The children are growing. They're going off to secondary school. They're getting more expensive. What else can we do apart from the day job? Why don't we do this? Um, and then I leveraged my program and project experience to try and get this thing from concept to design to um, stage where it's a deliverable and it's in the market. So that's how that's come about. But there's been lots of help, lots of support. People like Bessie on here, um, uh, people like my aunt, lots of other people have believed in the product, even sometimes more than I did. So it wouldn't be just me saying, me, me, me doing this. My husband with his support, even when he didn't understand where all of these drive was coming from, he still supported. So um, that's been that part of the journey. Um, with the girls, my dad again used to love reading. He was always with the book whenever I could find a chance. And from an early age, I used to love reading as well. Um, and I love writing, but I can't find the time because I'm a mom of three. I have a full time job. There's this chilly old thing we're trying to do now. Um, and by the way, if that takes off, whew, thankfully, I should be able to work for myself. Um, but, but then I just entered a competition in 2019. And before that, the house was littered with short stories here, left, right, and center. And it got to a point where I said, if we put all those stories together, it would be on the point of doing a book. So here's what we're going to do. Whatever comes out of this um, BBC 500 word contest, these stories here are going to form the core of a book. Because you don't need to leave it to when you're my age to be scrambling for time to try and do what your heart thinks for. Um, I'm building the chili oil. That might be my own retirement stuff, but that would be a legacy for you. You can start now building a legacy for yourself or for your own children. Um, so um, with some support, they've now written four books. We've got it published. Um, it's there. It's, it's, it's making um, good inroads. And they're starting to understand, I think, what a blessing it is to be able to know what it is you're good at from an early age because you can choose to be a writer um you can choose to be something else but you could always be a writer along um alongside that it's it's not for the faint-hearted i would say not for the faint-hearted mm -hmm. uh, it's it's definitely fulfilling because as it grows as you get more help you come to a point where you realize that then you can get you can you can sit back and enjoy the fruits but you would need to do the sweating because <laughs> nobody's going to do it for you. But it is important. It is in, it's important that we each find out um, what it is our heart seems for um, from early on because it takes away a lot of the confusion and the doubt and the stress. Um, in Like a lot of us come abroad and we don't really find our lives work until maybe we are in our 40s. Why? Orientation, lack of orientation, right? So... Um, uh, that's really what it's about, I think. Um, just trying to leave something behind that we can find fulfillment through and, and make the best out of life. Not easy, but good to do. 
Wow, I'm having goosebumps because I feel you're, um, you know, wearing all these hats and doing all these things. I want to commend you. So you've done an amazing Thank job. You. And also Thank your husband, you. Valentine, yeah. you know, Vali, yeah. we, all, we all know him and we know how much community oriented yeah. he is. So yeah. I'm not truly really surprised with the success that the girls are receiving because of the parents that they have, you know, and how involved you, you, you've been. So... I'm looking forward to seeing more and more from the girls and hopefully there is a lot of things that we can we you know oh, yeah. do together. It's all about living a legacy. Oh, and yeah. sometimes in the future, how many years fast forward, they'll be able to listen or watch this video <laughs> and say, Oh, yeah. mom was talking about us then. We were just nine yeah. and eleven. So <laughs> thank you. So great thank job. You. Well done. Thank you. So I guess Mireille, you 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 would just give us you know your your legacy. I've got a lot of pictures there at the back. So while you're speaking, I'm just going to be going through the different pictures just just to show the audience, you know, the kind of engagement that you're having with the people and the workers. So let's listen from you. Yes. Thank Mireille, you so much. Can Thank hear you. you. Mirai, I think I think you just have to bear with me. I'm just excited to show some of the, you know. So you just I think I don't know if your network is okay or if it's gone or is it uh, me? Uh, my, my, okay. my network is fine. My network is fine. Okay. Yes. So, no, first off, I, I, I really wanted to thank you for creating the platform because, I mean, you've known me for years now, almost a decade. I am not really the type of person that would put myself out there and speak about uh, my work and my achievements because I, I, I know how hard this path has been because I found my niche being attached to my personal story. And that is why I devoted all my years working with women and, and, and girls, really empowering, empowering them uh, to be the leaders. And I'm glad that uh, I can see some of the fruit and, and, and some of the women out there who are leaders. I'm not going to call them by names and, and really trying to, um, to teach my children that as well. And uh, unlike that, I have, uh, like I said, strong willed children. Yes, they are activists. However, sometimes some of the sacrifices that we make uh, being I'm a single mother and and uh, and I raising my children and, and the family as well. And, and those are some of the questions as well that have been often asked. Is it really worth it to take on your legacy when we're saying that you've uh, devoted your life uh, working and sometimes not getting the recognition but by clashes on top of that as well, but you keep on going. But my response to them is if you leave a, 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 a a, a life of a, a human purpose, if you know your purpose in life is regardless of uh, of uh, what you face, regardless of the backlash, keep on going, keep on pushing. And that's what, I'm, what I want my legacy to be. I want my legacy, the people to know that at least I contributed my small share of empowering women, of trying to really put women uh, in a pipeline as, uh, as uh, fighters, as uh, conquerors, as Amazons, instead of victim, because I really also got tired of the, 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 the victim uh, narrative that African women are being portrayed when I've met amazing African women, but it's just that they just needed someone to come and lift them up. And through their story, their story became mine because we had something to, to share. And when I became proximate with the problems and, and, and I knew that I could be part of the solution. And that is sometimes what people miss in your calling. Usually it could be a path that yourself, you, you have gone through. You see, I, I, I in my early state, uh, of a phase of my the chapter of my legacy i was helping broken women abused women i was helping women that had 
really no confidence. It's because I've been in that side. I've been into that problem. I was one of them. And when I found out that I was able to get out of it, I kind of made it my journey, my journey to ensure that every woman will be able to achieve and conquer that and go beyond what they, they ever expected in that. So that's, I believe, my legacy. It's a chapter and I'm just hoping that there will be more chapters until I pass on the baton. And, and hopefully, hey, if my children do not take that, uh, move on with that, my legacy, I know some one of my mentee will. So that's that. Thank you so much. Wow. Um, thank you so much, Mireille. Thank you so much, Inda. I feel this has been so enriching. To be honest, I really don't want to go. But we can't, we can't keep, you know, once, once, we, once we talk in a conversation like this, it's, it's very hard to, to put a stop to it. But for some reason, this legacy has to stop. So, so we've made our own, our own part of history. Um, just if there is one word in that that you want to tell someone out there, just one thing that you want to tell someone out there about building their legacy, what will it be? You will need to unmute yourself. Just one word that you want to tell someone out there. What will it be? Um, um, two words, two self-belief. Words, self-belief. self-belief. Okay. Um, so self-belief. And Mireille. Fight. 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 And I will say, show up. Play your part. Yeah. Fight. Self-belief. It's all about your legacy. It's all about you when you're no longer here. Mm-hmm. What is the impact you want to create? What is the lasting legacy you're leaving behind? We all playing our part. What is yours? So I'm gonna love these ladies and I'm gonna let them go. I know I said one out there to me, but the conversation was so sweet and so heated. And thank you so much for honoring this invitation. It has been fantastic. So I'm just gonna pop you backstage and then I'll thank the guests and then we can say bye to them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you so much once more for listening. It has been a fantastic time having this conversation. And sometimes it's just beautiful to listen, you know, to other people and listen to their part of the stories. Remember, what we're having here is not just the guests talking about how they feel, what they do, what they've achieved, or how they do things, but it's also about you contributing. I want to thank everybody who've made a contribution here today through the comment section. I want to thank you, Tessie, Michelle, Vicky, I mean, everybody, I can't, I can't name you all, but I feel um, it has been truly enriching, and I've, I'm going home today with a lot more than just doing this interview. So I'm going to be seeing you in the next two weeks, as usual. And I'm going to love you all. I'll leave you. And to say my name again for those who are just joining us, I'm Adeline Sede Kanga, founder and CEO of Faber Freak Media Group. But I love to say I'm Adeline from Faber Freak Magazine. So that's who I am. And you're watching the Corporate Women in Leadership. Thank you. If you want to join a mentorship program, please do leave us an email and we'll reach out to you or send us a message you know, on Facebook and I'll reach out to you. So thank you so much. And then, It's been another beautiful day. Bye.